Hello, this is Eric of NotBios, and welcome to my review of the X5 U5T2. So this is a lapel wireless mic system. There is no microphone built into this. And the reason I purchased this, this it wasn't provided, is because I want to get the best wireless audio possible. And the question is, is this the best? Well, we're going to find out in this review. Now let's get started. Studio. So some details of the packaging is right here. Here's the back. And of course we have the details also in the front. And let's take this apart. Now it comes in a box that says X5, as you see, nice shiny. And let's take that off. And from there, we got another cover. And that covers up the microphones. So in here, there's something else as well. I've never opened this up. And everything else is, uh, well, taken out of the packaging and everything. But I've not used the device at this moment yet. I have no clue how good it sounds, other than a review I've seen online. And you might wonder why the X5, like, Hardly anyone's heard about it. Well, I already bought the X5 LV2 because I didn't want to buy the Rode, just like everyone else buys the Rode Wireless Go Labs and everything. So I wanted to try something different. This comes with the LV1 and I've already owned the LV2. And this is actually, I, I glued this foamy on because it's too easy to lose the little foamy for this. And that stops your plosives if you're talking close by. And to me, that's kind of important. So I stuck it on there. This one is like small, like a grain of rice. I don't even know how to express how small this is. Smaller than this. And this is already small itself. So those are the labs. And the device itself, we got three batteries in here. And the one nice thing is if it's just you, having the extra battery allows you to swap a battery into the other device. If it's just you to actually keep on going and it only takes a moment to swap out the battery. Now let's see how the batteries go into these devices. Oh, and by the way, when charging, you actually have a red light. And when it's fully charged, there was no light that I saw at all. And you can see on the back, there's a belt clip on your lav mic. So you could clip it to your belt or the side of your pants. Okay, anyways, placement of batteries. There's a little trap door here. And I grab one of the batteries by its little tab, as you can see. And I make sure where the contacts are inside this thing. And I slide the battery in until it clips in there. And then I push the trap door down. These devices are quite light, by the way. So that's one thing that's uh, nice if you're looking for lightweight. The battery does add a bit of weight. This one's a little bit different. This is the receiver end. So you're going to actually push these two tabs in. And this one's a little bit different how it goes in too. I don't understand why they made it different, but that's what they did. And you can see all these little tabs inside. So I'm going to slide this in. So it's pretty much you put it in and down. I really don't like this design that way. Uh, it could have been the same as everything else. I don't know why they didn't, but it's kind of weird. It's like spring loaded of some sort. To get it out is a little bit of a complicated mess. So it looks like you just push it hard and give it a sudden shove and it helps it pop out. Anyways, let's get that on. And that snaps into place. And now for the last microphone, same idea. You push the little tab to open it. And then you put, uh, you grab it by your little tab to make it easy. Make sure your contacts are the same direction. What if you put it the wrong direction? Can it go in? No. That's good that they actually made it that way. So you can only put it in one direction. Perfect. Snapped in. That's good. And of course, we got a thread on for the lav. So for settings, it looks like there's a one that says mic line. Channel. So you can choose different audio channels if you're getting interference on the one. Plus minus, I'm taking that plus minus volume. And we have a mute button. Nice, simple design, it seems. Okay. And on the other end, the receiver end, what do we have? We have channel, channel, also oh, channel one, channel two. And uh, what else do I see on here? I see our mute buttons on each channel as well. So if you need to change your gain level, your volume from the device itself right here, you can change that and that's listed on here in very very small writing which might be bigger on the screen if you have a big screen than i can see by eye and i can see a uh, mono and stereo on this device we have our stereo cable for a camera 
we have a charging cable. These are micro USBs, not the standard USB-C. I prefer USB-C, but it's no deal breaker for me. So this is to, to charge both of the microphones. And this one here, you normally do to charge the receiver itself. And here we have the other lavalier that's still in the package. And we have our little uh, wind muffs. We have two of them. Then we also have our clips for our lavaliers to actually clip it onto yourself. And the second to clip, of course. And how about that little package? This little package might have our instruction manual and stuff, but let's see, we got a bag. Okay, nice little thing, a carrying case. It means you can have all three flopping around on you or toss the foam in here. I don't know if that will fit in here. Yeah, I don't think that'll fit properly. So you got a carrying bag. Inside the carrying bag itself, we have three pamphlets. So we got the one that just fell. We got our warranty card. We have this other booklet here that says Declaration of Conformity Statement. We have, looks like the manual. And we also have something about uh, another wireless system and uh, different devices from X5. So if you're looking for what else they have, if you prefer the device that much, you can see what else they have. As for the microphone itself, you can see it has a locking thread. That means I can simply attach whatever mic and lock it on. This is the X5 LV2, which doesn't come with this. I'm going to test it with it, of course. And this is the DD DA35, and it locks on as well. Nice. You can see the DA35 on there. Everything you hear at this point forward is completely this X5 mic system. And I'll be changing labs and devices, but it'll always be from now on, straight in this review, the X5 audio system, unless stated otherwise. My volume on the device here is at negative 60 dB on the mic itself, and it's on my side, anyways. And the receiver itself on both left and right channel is at negative. 5 dB. It's set to mono right now. If I set to stereo, it's going to play through one of the left or right stereo channels. And then this would have its own independent channel, unless I set it to mono. Then both mics will pay, play through the same exact channels and there's no separation. It, it's a men's channel. Oh, okay. You should watch. Did you know Things. there's a men's channel? You should watch it, apparently. Are we on TV? Hi, well, Mom. This would be more like a <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> yeah. So do you actually watch many different channels on YouTube? Yes. But what do you actually watch though? What do I watch? Do you, like, <sighs> you don't do tech stuff like I do. Like I watch Gamers Nexus. I do not. Hardware Unboxed. Oh, I watch stuff about Mars and uh, stuff about the news. I'm going to switch to... The other mode to mono mode so now rather than being left right separate channels will now be in one single channel so what did you actually learn about mars oh what the weather's like um is there a window on mars yes there is Jenny back to stereo do you want to travel to mars sure why not if it's a free trip i'm all for it just because it's a free trip just need to get home <laughs> well that probably won't happen if you go to mars well, then I'm not going to go. They just lost a customer. We should send you. <laughs> sure. If you guys agree, uh, comment below. So for connecting this to a lavalier, there are two different ways. I can go through the hole at the front, which you're going to have a little bit of a difficult time trying to get in there fully. So you got to work at that. Um, I just did that now. And you can place it like such. Let's see if I can get this in here, the bulky part of the wire. don't know if I can or not. Oh, it looks like you can. Uh, no, not really. I'm not going to try to force it. But yeah, you can have the mic like this on you. In my case, I have it tucked underneath and you can see the front part right here, but the mic itself is within my shirt. So you see the loop right there. So you can toss this between the loop. Now it's there. And now I push this in. And if you pull that little lever, 
the little lever right here, it makes it easier to slide in. Now, otherwise, if I'm not pushing it, it's going to be hard to get in here, see? So I pull that little lever and it pops into place. That's how I have it held right now. The audio you're hearing right now is the X5. The volume is quite loud. In fact, I'm going to turn it down just slightly. And let's see if I turn it down. If I turn down the right one, I do not know at the moment. Oh, we're going the wrong way, going the wrong way. Okay, am I going down in volume? Am I going down in volume? Oh, wow, you can actually make yourself a safety channel. Okay, so I can turn down one individually at a time. Now to turn this on, you simply pull this lever, hold it down. That was this lever, you actually hold it down for a bit. And you have to hold it down for a little bit, to turn it off. So let's see that from the side here. So I have it held and it takes a moment to turn on. There's no flashing of the screen in person. You only see that on camera. So if I push this a second, see, it doesn't turn on. You have to hold it for a bit. So let's see how it sounds with the LV2 and also the DD. Now I'm using the LV2 and I had to crank the gain quite a bit higher to get the same volume level as the included mic. So the LV2, normally this is like the size of like literally just a grain of rice. I believe they call it three, like, three millimeter mic. It's very, very small. In fact, I've measured, it. I'm sure it's less than a three millimeter cylinder, super small. This is one that you'd hide on your talent, say in a place where it's inconspicuous and you can't see it anymore because it's so darn small. You can use some cloth, some cloth tape and uh, tape it to your talent within their shirt and it stays hidden quite well because it's small size. Again, this is the LV2 lav, and the included one is the LV1. And uh, I never attached the little wind muff yet, but uh, let's attach that wind muff now anyways to see how it looks with the wind muff on. The LV1 has a little hat to it. The other one is this smooth here, this LV2. Now let's try with the DD DA35 lavalier and see how this works. Right now I have my DD with micro dot connected. It threads on, so that is great. And this probably works best with this device in terms of that I don't have to fiddle around with how far it is in the jack. And it just seems to work. However, my volume is turned down a bit too much because this is actually less sensitive, it seems, than the LV1, who would have thunk. Okay, turning it up, turning it up, turning up, turning it up. Okay, right now I should be in a decent volume for sure. I don't want to be any louder than this or else I couldn't end up clipping. So, how am I coming through with a D, 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 A, 35, W, Lav with micro dot. Now the lavalier you're hearing me on is from Kamuka or Kamuka, whatever you want to call it. Anyways, the point is I want to see how it works on this because that system doesn't work good with wired lavs. It works good with the one that, that's included but not with other ones. However, this thing so far has been working quite well with no matter what you use. I can like cover this with my hand, wave my hand around in front of it, and it doesn't cause a problem. The only thing that will cause a problem is there's no clip in on this and I can bump this and it will actually pop the audio. Now to test the mute button on this microphone system. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can we hear me? And I don't know if it made a pop sound or not, but that's something to know if you do press the mute button. Mic line, what does that mean? Testing, uh, te what the heck, what did that do? Mic line, oh, weird. There's a little adjustment. So you can adjust quickly the D DB level. So if I press that, it changes my level of audio just instead of press a button. Now, before I go outside, I want to test distance and how this sounds. Testing one, two, three, 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 testing one, two, three. Now let's continue on outside. The receiver itself is located way down here on me and everything's turned down quite a bit because it's fairly loud to pick up. So if out nice and close, you get good volume with this device. It seems to have a lot of gain. And this is where this wireless lav system will beat most systems. It has a lot of gain built into it. Let's do this distance test. It's a bit breezy. This is a foam muff and the question is can you actually hear that wind noise? It's possible because normally you want a firm muff for wind noise. Let's zoom up a bit if I haven't already. There we go. And right now we're at 15 feet. 
4.5 meters and let's do a turnaround. Can you hear me? 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 Now, one thing I did learn in drama class is always face towards a camera. So a good practice is line of sight at all times. Now we are at 25 feet, 7.5 meters. So can you still hear me? Can you 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 hear me? And now let's continue on. And we are approaching the next sign. And the next one down here is going to be 50 feet, 15 meters. Let's do a turnaround. Can you hear me? 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 As long as you reached 7.5 meters, 25 feet, we should be good. Right now we're beyond that. And this is kind of excessive for most people because the distance is quite far. It'll depend on what you are doing with your particular microphone system. We are now at 75 feet, 25 meters. Let's do a turnaround. Can you hear me? 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 And the rating of this is 30 meters. And 30 meters is only 100 feet, but I say only, it's still quite a far distance. We are now at 100 feet away, 30 meters. And let's do a turnaround. Can you hear me? 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 And for now, I'm going to keep it line of sight now with the camera to the mic system because this is the maximum rated distance. There's no point in trying to turn around at all. And if you can hear me, well, we're just getting some extra distance. Now I'm at 125 feet, 37.5 meters, and let's keep going. And we are approaching the next sign down, and the next one here is 150 feet, 45 meters. I don't know if you can still hear me. I'm gonna go a little bit further. I'm gonna to go to what's about 175 feet, right about here. And let's go all the way, all the way to about 60 meters, 200 feet, and that'll be somewhere around here. And we're gonna keep on going. Can you still hear me? We're now at 225 feet, 67.5 meters away. And can you still hear me? Volume is quite low on Android phones and it won't always just work. In fact, if I connect it to my Android phone, it won't use the microphone on my Asus Zenfone 7 Flip. What I had to do is use the Sure Motive video app and that has lower video quality sadly than the native camera on this device. I know this footage doesn't look as good but right now I'm talking to you through my mobile phone. You're thinking wait a mobile phone what does that do with this microphone? Well I'm actually speaking through the microphone. Yeah, you see that, right? With an adapter and different connections, you can do pretty much anything. Well, it's not compatible basically with anything other than a digital camera. It only works properly with a 3.5 millimeter aux jack. I tried it with a mobile phone. You saw it recording, but I had to crank the volume way up. And after in post, I had to crank it up even more and it recorded in mono, not stereo. And I had to use an app for it to be recognized, not even by the phone itself. So yeah, this system is limited to the digital camera. Now the volume, the gain that this system has is incredible. So if your lab is quiet, it can crank it right up. There's not a problem with that whatsoever. In fact, if anything, it's too loud. You'll have to cover like this and create a shadow so you can see the display in the sunlight. So that is one thing to note. Another thing is it does not have a firm off for your uh, lav that comes with this, which means in the wind, it's not gonna be the best option at all. Okay, right now there's a bit of noise outside and there's quite a bit of wind and it's now started raining. This is not really a mic for outside per se. You're better off with a firm off. Now with other labs, the reception was pretty darn good. But one thing I didn't test yet is to listen to the silence. Point of this test is to show the self noise of the microphone to see how much silence you really do have. So normally you want to crank up your speakers a bit to hear if there's any hiss or crackly noise or any sort of buzz or anything like that to figure out how silent the audio actually is when you are not speaking. That gives you an idea of how the quality of the system is 
because the more noise you get in the background, the worse it could be. All these devices, all these lights are 2.4 gigahertz devices. Here's my mobile phone. Both my Bluetooth and my Wi-Fi are enabled and I have my power on. So right now this could be causing a disturbance. I'm gonna put this near the microphone. So it's right beside the microphone, receiver end right here. Let's try against the actual receiver transmitter. And are we getting any noise? So this device has been pretty darn good for blocking any buzzing or hissing sound or a RFI disturbance. However, in the silence, there were times where I did hear it just a bit. This one controls most of the sound better than pretty much any mic I've tried. Keep in mind, it has no speaker, so you're limited strictly to labs. If the battery is dying in your one device and you want to switch over, it is totally seamless. You just turn this on, automatically connects, and as long as your channel is matched up ahead of time, it'll stay that way. The channel this is on and the channel that is on, so the transmitter and receiver, stores. In fact, even your volume levels. So you might wonder, can you connect the receiver or the microphones themselves while using them? You can connect the microphones. Do we hear the silence right now? Okay, now I'm gonna connect this, the one I'm using right now, and connect it. Am I still good, audio-wise? Okay, now let's switch over to the other part that's connected to the camera. This is the receiver end, and my experience when I tried it was not so good. Now let's connect to this device. We are getting bad audio, I can see that right now. Don't forget to subscribe to NotBios and help this channel grow. I hope you appreciated this review of the X5 U5. Do you want to go to Mars? That's the question everyone's wondering. This is Eric of NotBios. Thanks for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day. No comment? <laughs> nope. You always usually end in a crazy comment. Sorry, it's been a long day, it's hard to think.